Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Purple Rain Painting aka Ted uh, posting up the second video. So I had a massive response from the first video I was really happy with and um, great response for the, uh, the pictures I've been posting across on the Evermetal group uh, Squidmar Squid Squad and also my Instagram uh, which is purple rain underscore painting uh, over on Instagram. So if you haven't followed me yet, uh, please do. You'll get a constant update uh, on any process I'm doing, new videos, and also my alpha leech which I've been working on. Uh, so on the table in front of us at the moment, you can see these are the tools that I've just listed uh, for today's tutorial on decals and weathering. Um, so first up, what we've got here is a 60mm base that's been primed black, uh, then been sprayed with Panzer Dark Grey, and then a gloss varnish over the top, which is ready to seal that in and get a bit of traction for the deck out. Uh, so we've got a spare Alpha Legion uh, transfer from 412, which is for my Alpha Legion Primaris Force. And uh, what we're first going to do is once you've cut it out, get it clamped in on some tweezers. And um, we're going to use this micro set solution to soften the decal, uh, soften the decal glue so we can get it applied to the base. Uh, now, this stuff does dry fairly quickly, um, so you need to work reasonably fast. What I'm going to do is just soak the back with a brush with some of the solution, then soak the front, let it soften up. Once you can see the transfer start moving, we can then choose where to place it. So what I'm doing here is I'm just softening it with the brush still, just slowly starting to move it so you can start seeing the transfer sliding on the backing sheet. Uh, once that's done, I'm going to begin to place that on the base that I've made there. So I'm using the base because it was a nice flat surface um, to be able to place things on, easy to paint um, and show off the, the skills we're doing today. So I'm just going to move it slightly to the transfer uh, with the brush and then I'm going to use these tweezers just to hold it in place. And then slide it around. As you can see on this attempt, I did actually place it slightly off center. Um, so, all I'm going to do is just lift it back up before it adheres to it properly, replace it, and then get it flattened down. Okay, what I'm doing here, I'm using the brush just to get out any creases, uh, wrinkles, anything like that, and make it nice and smooth and flat as possible ready for the second stage of the micro sole. Right, so that is all dry now. So what we're going to do now is going to apply the second part of the solution, uh, which is known as Micro Sol. And what this does, it helps dissolve the edging of the transfer uh, to give it a more painted on appearance. Uh, now, because we're applying this over an already gloss surface, you will notice there is a border still even after it's been applied. Um, don't worry about that because once it's all varnished at the end, it's not noticeable anymore and it does all appear uniform, nicely painted now. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do is just dip the brush in and just leave that on top, so spread it over and then just leave that to soak in. And again, once that is dry, I would recommend leaving this to dry naturally and not using a hairdryer as well in this solution. Um, just because it, speeding it up doesn't really help the transfer to uh, melt with the plastic. So yeah, I'm going to leave you guys to it and once this is all dry, I'll be back with you again. Right, so here we are, it's completely dry, but as you can see in the light, you can still see an outline of where the transfer was. But as I said, that's not a problem. Uh, once we're varnished at the end, it'll all look absolutely fine. So what we're going to do now 
um, is we're just going to do our first stage of uh, the uh, weathering. Just get an old paint lid, anything like that, uh, give the bottle a good shape. So this is the Vallejo Metal Color Dark Aluminium. We're just going to put a bit down and then we're going to begin sponging this on. Um, right. So give it a good shape, as I said, once that goes into the pot. What we're going to do now is we're going to get uh, a kitchen sponge. It can be old, new, doesn't really make any difference. Uh, just tear a piece off and we're going to tear this down to shape. You can get weathering sticks, um, but I mean, realistically, the, it's money for stuff you probably got around the house anyway. So if you've got some tweezers uh, and a small ball of clip, I think I've got my ball clip from the pound shop for like 50 of them. Um, just clip it down and hey presto, you've made your own weathering stick. Um, so we're just going to pop this into the uh, dark aluminium paint, uh, brush most of it off on the towel that I've got there next to me, and then begin sponging this on, just leaving random patterns. The more random you can be, the more natural it looks. Don't get yourself into a pattern of just doing it in exactly the same places on each part, because it detracts from the sort of the realism of what we're trying to achieve today. Um, so yeah, so start sponging on. What you can also do is do multiple passes of this in different colours to give more variation. Um, it's really up to you, but uh, yeah, as I said, the key to this technique really is sort of the, the random placing of it. Um, obviously on a round surface like this, it's trying really hard not to make it look uniform. Uh, on the doors I did, which you'll see at the end, uh, they look a more, lot more realistic and uh, random on there. Right, so this is the weathering pencil from AK Interactive. I really recommend these. Uh, they're not massively expensive for the full set. They come in a real variety of colours and they're water soluble, so you can use a brush um, and some water just to fade them out uh, and achieve some really good effects with them. Uh, so we're going to use them for scratches, so a nice, nice sharp pencil point, and then literally just draw some random lines on there to make some scratches. Uh, you can do little patterns, anything you want, and they're a really, really great product. This just gives us a base of where we can put some rust effects um, coming out of those metal parts. So the next portion we're going to do, uh, we're going to get the oil paints. Now the reason I'm putting them on a piece of card, uh, oil paints have um, obviously oil in them. It's made from lanolin, which comes from a sheep's wool. So if you put a little blob on your card, it absorbs most of the oil in there. Uh, still keeping them wet, but it just takes a lot of the uh, oily film off the paints you're using. Uh, which you don't want put them in a model because it'll just take forever to dry off and then it, it'll affect the way other paints work on there as well. So this is the Burnt Sienna, um, just putting down the black as well, which are the only two colours we'll need for this tutorial. So this is just an old medium brush I've got. Um, it's reasonably frayed and knackered, but it's perfect what we're doing today. So all we're gonna do is get this little dish, get some of the thinners, and then if you use the brush as a guide, it stops it from pouring everywhere. Just get that exactly to pour in the little pot. And then we're gonna take most of that thinner off of our brush, load up our brush with some oil paint, and then just begin placing it in some interesting shapes um, where you want the rough patches to be. And uh, really good to achieve like a really nice stippling effect. But again, sort of you don't want to use a nice expensive brush because it will absolutely kill them. So as you can see, I'm just taking most of it off, just getting a little bit on the brush and begin placing it. So I thought this nice long scratch here would be really nice to have some, some rust effect coming out from underneath where it's been scratched away from under the metal. Um, and then we'll slowly begin stippling that on, forming some nice shapes. Now 
what you can also do is you go back to the sponge and you can sponge it on just to get a nice stipple pattern as well. Um, so yeah, but again, one of the great things with this sort of weathering technique is it's very, very forgiving. You can just go back and forth, back and forth uh, to really sort of ultimately wait until you get the, the results you want to achieve because oil paints have such a good working time. Um, even with the, uh, the thinner I use, which is a quick drying thinner, uh, I still get half an hour to an hour's worth of working time even once they dry you can then reactivate them with the thinner still um, so if you don't like something you can just take it off in the end it's not a problem um, now once we've got the patches of the burnt sienna on there i'm just going back over with some black just to give it some depth um, one of the great things with oil paints they do blend incredibly easily so even just slipping it on you will notice that you get little blends where the two paints meet each other giving it a really natural look um, again just you can stipple this on as well So what I'm doing here, uh, so I'm going to wash off the brush now in the thinner, get rid of most of the paint on there, um, and then we're going to start the blending process of feathering the ends. It's not as scary as you sound, so all you do is just get most of the thinner off your brush, and then just slowly feather away at the edges in a really short motion to blend that through. Um, once you've blended it through, what we'll then start doing is the streaking. Uh, again, you can use a uh, sort of reasonably pointy brush for this, and you can use a really knackered feathered brush for this. Um, it's really up to yourself, but the the more you can play around with it, the, the more the effects you'll get. So we just want nice sharp lines going down to form those streaking effects. Try and get it over the transfer as much as possible to give it a naturally weathered look. You want a nice bright white transfer shining through underneath. Um, so yeah, I'll leave you guys with it. And then uh, once we've gone to the next steps, I'll come back and let you know what's going on. As I was saying before, um, you can see you can use it with any different brush. Uh, so this paint to one, one of the large dry brushes, got a really nice point on it. Um, and these are great for weathering. Um, so all we're trying to do now is just refine the shapes of the streaks that are running down. And we'll refine this a bit more in a bit as well with some solid oil paint. Um, but as I said previously, with this technique, it really is just going back and forth until you're happy with the results because you have so much working time with the products that we use. Um, it's yeah, it's very forgiving, and it's I, to be honest, I find it incredibly fun and relaxing to do as well.
policy I made a mistake I saw I wasn't very happy with uh, so all I do is reload the brush with some thinner and just wipe away the bits I don't want still leaving a weather patch over the transfer but just cleaning up the majority of the large parts I didn't want on there Okay, so this is the bit I was saying about just getting a little bit more oil paint on your brush and then start refining those lines where you want them to be heavier um, effect on them um, and just stippling on and then bringing down and the stippling gives you that really nice grimy texture as well with the oil paints um, so the more you can stipple in larger uh, areas the better it will look um, if you want a sort of really thick corroded rust look um, with the little stripes here so yeah as I said just refining those lines down with a bit more oil paint and then just blending them out again with the thinners. Take it from the lid, we don't need much on there, dab it off and then begin sponging it in the areas we want to have it. Uh, so again it's just adding those different layers of texture as well. Um, so you'll see, I was going over wet oil paint still, which is absolutely fine because it'll just help it all blend together and you get those realistic colours and textures on there. And this is what you really want is the, the texture um, and the colours to blend through each other. Um, so you can see I just work my way through those varying colours going back and forth using a hairdryer between to dry them um, because they've got thinners pre-mixed in so then they do dry fairly fast into the hairdryer and just going back and forth between them until you're happy with the results you get out of it.
so look at this, I just wanted to try and match it up as close as I can to the effect I got on my doors. Um, so I'm not quite happy with the result uh, on the plastic cards yet. So I'm just going to go back and forth a few more times with the uh, rust deposits on there. Um, it's always good to have some reference nearby as well. Um, anytime I'm out with my wife, um, I always stop and take pictures of rusted doors and rusted bridges, anything with natural rust effects or um, lichen, that sort of thing on them. So my phone's full of things like that as a natural reference. Obviously, you can use Google uh, as well and have a search for different um, effects. And yeah, and there's a whole plethora of things you can do out there. But for rust, I find that living in a town, uh, it's really easy to find rusted items around. And a lot of them have really great reference on them already. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go back and forth a few more times uh, and then we'll end up the video. Okay, so just to finish up, all I've done is given it a coat of matte varnish. As you can see, it really blends everything together on there. Um, but that was the second video for my channel. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Again, if you haven't done so, uh, like, subscribe and share. Uh, and also follow my Instagram page, Purple Ring Painting. Um, but yeah, thanks very much. Take care.